So what about for regards to propulsion and battery systems? Where do you think I'm talking? I've seen boaters now going, uh, considering doing 48 volt, uh, even running their inverters off 48 volts, um, actually having sort of their all large DC loads being at 48 volts. What's your thought on uh, going from 12, 24, and now some people with propulsion going to 48 volts? Any sort of tips and tricks or ideas that you have on? Um, so we, we um, you know, we developed that in integral system few years ago, which is basically an 8-kilowatt alternator on steroids. And if you uh, run the arithmetic, you'll discover 8 kilowatts at 12 volts is 670 amps. Um, there's no conductors available to us big enough to carry it. If you run it at 24 volts, it's, you know, 300, and, I don't know, 30, 40 amps. So we're really pushing the limit of available conductors. So we, we actually designed that to run at 48 volts. Um, purely because of the conductor size issue and also to make it practical to install it so you're not having to run, you know, conductors this size through the boat. Um, but at the time, uh, there was almost no 48-volt equipment because now we're talking five or six years ago now. And um, so then you can go down to a standard 24-volt, 12-volt systems and with DC to DC converters or battery to battery chargers, uh, of which there's a, an ever-increasing choice these days with, with really high efficiencies. I mean, many of them now are over 95% efficient at the conversion. So so that worked, but uh, we're finally getting a viable 48-volt platform for our boats. We've now got bow thrusters, windlasses, winches, uh, water makers, uh, air conditioning, um, all of these, com- these high loads that we have on our boats, DC loads, we're beginning to see at 48 volts. So it certainly pays if you're going to have um, uh, high current devices like an 8 or 10 kilowatt alternator to have a 48 volt platform on the boat and put all the high load consumers on it. It it gets a ton of copper out of the boat in terms of conductor sizes and the higher voltage equipment is generally more efficient Mm -hmm. and uh, smaller and lighter. And, uh, And then just to have the the, the remaining equipment, the lights and the fans and whatever, at 12 or 24 volts, uh, and just have a little buffer bank of batteries at that voltage with DC to DC converters or battery to battery chargers. Uh, and it works great. We've had it yeah. on our boat for at least six years now. No, actually, from 2014, so we're talking eight years, with um, three voltages, 48, 24, and 12. And uh, it's it's... It's no real problem doing it that way. What size uh, battery bank do you do at 12 and 24 for your boat? Well, with the um, that in, integral alternator, uh, because it'll put out 8 kilowatts, uh, initially we were doing this with lead-acid batteries, the um, Firefly carbon foam batteries. Yeah. And um, their charge acceptance rate up to about 60% state of charge is, is the 1C rate. So... If you've got eight kilowatts, you need eight kilowatt hours of batteries, um, which is basically uh, 800 amp hours at 12 volts. So, uh, and then we gravitated to lithium ion batteries. So it largely depends on the charge acceptance rate of those batteries. Although lithium ion normally has a very high charge acceptance rate, if you look at the small print with a lot of the batteries that we've got in the boat marketplace, you'll discover that the recommended maximum charge rate on many of those batteries is 0.3C. So if you've got an 8 kilowatt charging device and a 0.3C charge acceptance rate, you need 24 kilowatt hours of batteries to keep the charge rate down to 0.3C. So at the moment, we actually have um, about 11 kilowatt hours of, of torpedo lithium ion batteries which will accept a charge rate of 1C. Um, so uh, with an 8 kilowatt output from the alternator, we're charging them at about 0.7C, something like that. Um, so everything's in balance. But right. you do have to, you can't just drop a super high output alternator on a boat. Uh, you've got to think through the engineering and all of these issues like the charge acceptance rate of the batteries, the conductor sizes, whether you've got the right fuses in the right place, uh, is the battery management system talking to the alternator? Because if it's mm. not, and um, the batteries see a high voltage condition developing, 
they'll disconnect and all of a sudden you've got seven, eight kilowatts with no place to go. And then you get a humongous voltage spike through the boat. And in the one case that we've had, you blow out $100,000 worth of electronics oh, <laughs> in a fraction of a second. Um, so, you know, you, you, these systems have to be engineered. Uh, you can't just grab all these bits and pieces off the shelf and, and expect them to, to work properly uh, and give you a trouble-free system for the next five years or 10 years. And that's a, a lot yeah. of what uh, uh, I do these days is working with people on these higher performance systems to make sure that the pieces are all in sync uh, and that they've got a system that's going to work reliably for the next decade uh, without getting them into trouble. The, the lifestyle benefits are tremendous. In the time it takes us to uh, drop an anchor or pull it back up, we can generate and store enough electricity to run our boat for 24 hours. That's just amazing. And we, we never have to run an engine battery charging at anchor. I mean, there's, the whatever engine runtime we do for propulsion purposes is more than enough to keep up with all the house loads on the boat and store enough energy to, to keep up with the house loads for the next day or two. It's uh, yeah, It that's... really is a, a dramatic change from when we first started. The first high output alternator we put on the boat was 40 years ago. Um, so this is not new technology. Uh, but it, it's qualitatively different and improved over what it was in those early days when we first started doing this stuff. Yeah, and it's not, I mean, you, you're chasing it, you know, to the end. You're going right. You're slaying the dragon. But people can have wins all along that journey, you know, that journey of of getting to be more reliable without shore power, not running the engine through solar through wind, uh, they they can get there, but not as far as you got. You got to the end. Like that's the uh, end all be all. To be able to run your engine for such a short period of time, and to have that all that power be generated to run for twenty four hours, that's the holy grail. It really is. Uh, but not everyone can get there. Uh, not everyone's willing to have the systems that can obviously provide that level of comfort. Some people are going to find that, uh, you know, even just from a technology perspective, you know, some are going to find it too hard, even if they can afford it. Uh, but it's inspiring to the rest of us because a lot of us are chasing it. I mean, reducing that generator runtime or engine runtime or maximizing uh, what you can do to recharge your battery bank is just provides, like you say, it's quiet. It's a game changer. You know, it's you just don't have to worry. And that's a big It's win. also very um, taken millions of investment dollars. Um, you know, we've been lucky. We got a big grant from the European Union a decade or more ago. We got substantial funding from a big American corporation. Um, and then um, ju just to get that integral alternator uh, on uh, our boat, when we're uh, just a little above idle, we're getting over three kilowatts out of that alternator. And at 1,000 RPM, I'm getting close to six kilowatts. Um, but it took an awful lot of investment to to take an alternator and get it to produce those levels of output at those speeds. And we went through, I mean, I have a photograph somewhere that I use in some of my presentations of a pile of, uh, of wrecked alternators that we, we went through over the course of the development of that project. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but, it, but it has, it, it's worked out unbelievably well. I mean, to this day, even though we've had this system for, six years now, it still puts a smile on my face when I crank up the engine and I go look at the panel and I see I'm putting six and seven and eight kilowatts in the batteries and the, and the engine's running maybe a 1200 RPM. It's, uh, it just, uh, well, it, it, it's just wonderful, basically. It, it's, um, it's a system that we all dreamed about over the decades yep. and, and never could get on our boats. Yeah, definitely the holy grail. Definitely the holy grail. So if you're curious, again, go on our website and find out more answers and solutions with this sort of setup. And thanks for asking. And thanks for all of you for listening and tuning in.